The world is in the grip of unprecedented economic crisis. World leaders are engaged in heated debates at the World Economic Forum annual meeting, which opened on Wednesday in Davos, Switzerland. Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin is calling for a new global economic system that is fair and efficient. Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao is calling for a review of the balance between saving and consumption and the regulation of new financial instruments. These are some of the 2,500 participants at Davos 2009. They include many heads of state and Nobel laureates, as well as CEOs. At the center of this global business network is Klaus Schwab, the forum's executive chairman. Each year, Schwab brings together the world's movers and shakers to address today's global challenges. Because this is a transformational change, a crisis, it's not just a cyclical crisis. It's a transformational crisis, which means we have to change our patterns, our behavior, maybe our rules, in order to make sure that we avoid a similar crisis in the future. Today, we'll hear his insights on reshaping the world post-crisis. Welcome to today's Close Up, I'm Hiroko Kuniya. According to the latest IMF forecast, growth in the world economy in 2009 will drop to a post-war low of 0.5 percent. How do the 40 heads of state and business leaders at Davos this year view the fast-spreading crisis, and what measures will they devise to overcome it? Shaping the post-crisis world is the theme at Davos this year. The annual conference has become a key forum for bringing together leaders in various fields to discuss the important issues of the day. The forum was started by Klaus Schwab in 1971, who was then just 33 years old. For nearly 40 years, he has gathered the world's leaders together annually to address global challenges in shaping the future while seeking to build mutual trust. He says today's crisis in our globalized world is a transformational one that will bring about fundamental change. He warns that the crisis will deepen if the world fails to build institutions that can help resolve the mid- to long-term challenges along with the present economic crisis. He says this is no longer the time for each country or company to pursue self-interest. I spoke with him in this exclusive NHK interview. Klaus Schwab is 70 years old. He makes the final decision on whom to invite and what to discuss at Davos. While paying close attention to continuous change in the world, he has helped to generate new ideas for overcoming global challenges. A native of Germany, Schwab studied economics in Switzerland and taught at the University of Geneva for nearly 30 years. He started the Davos Forum in 1971 when a major shift began in the workings of the global economy. He brought together European business leaders to learn American-style management. Since the end of the Cold War in the early 1990s, the Davos Forum has taken up global political issues as well as economic ones. In 1990, South African anti-apartheid leader Nelson Mandela was released after nearly 30 years in prison. Schwab invited Mandela and then South African President F.W. de Klerk to the Davos Forum in 1992 to demonstrate international support for abolishing apartheid. 
In 2001, Schwab invited the Israeli and Palestinian leaders to Davos to encourage a dialogue between them. The Davos Forum has played a significant role in efforts to tackle these and other international problems. This year, the Forum sees the U.S.-born global financial crisis as the most pressing issue. Schwab says what we need to overcome this crisis is a global effort to create a new system with a new way of thinking. Professor Schwab, thank you very much for joining us today. The world has experienced a rapid economic decline after the financial crisis. People are losing their jobs and the companies are going out of business. Insecurity looms all over the world. What would you say is the significance of this year's global meeting in Davos? It is probably the first crisis of a global age. And uh, Davos brings together all the decision makers, not only from business, from governments, uh, civil society, academia, in order to look what were the reasons for this crisis and much more important, how can we come out of this crisis and how will the world look after the crisis? What we need now is to bring the best minds together and to see how can we change? Because this is a transformational change, uh, crisis. It's not just a cyclical crisis. It's a transformational crisis, which means we have to change our patterns, our behavior, maybe our rules, in order to make sure that we avoid a similar crisis in the future. But um for the past few years, it has been known that at the global meeting, people were talking about the possible systemic risks that, ha that, that is present in the financial crisis. Why do you think, despite of all the warnings, it was not listened to? We all were in this euphoria. Um, thinking now the world will continue to grow on a global level at 5% uh, every year. Um, we, we overlooked uh, the serious danger signals. And what we have to do now is to make sure that we establish the necessary rules, institutions. Uh, maybe we also have to change our own morality. Uh, in order to make sure that in the future this is not happening again. We need more intergenerational responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to look much more at the long-term wealth generation processes. If we want to create sustainable progress, we have to introduce into business a more long-term perspective. So. Is that a suggestion that uh, many of the participants that were present in the last few years at the World Economic Forum were uh, major executives at uh, the wall from Wall Street, from the city? Uh, were you saying that maybe they were too much driven with uh, bonuses and uh, short-term uh, objectives? It's not only the managers. Don't, don't forget. Uh, there were also the shareholders. Mm. Uh, we all were part of the game. Uh, I compared it with the situation you had a big highway. 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 Mm -hmm. And the highway is called globalization. Mm -hmm. So what happened is that suddenly some people started to race at 150, 180, 200 miles, mm -hmm. and the whole traffic got faster and faster. So it was a kind of what some people call exuberance mm -hmm. in our system. And suddenly some cars who went too fast crashed, Lehman Brothers and so on. So they crashed. Now we have a big crash. Everybody ran into the crash. And now our situation today is that governments acted as ambulances. They came to rescue uh, the, the injured people 
all the banks and so on. That's where we stand today. Now, what do we have to do? We have to look for each injured person or each bank or each organization. What, what is his state of health? How can we make sure that he survives? But that's not enough. We have also to introduce uh, new regulations along the highway to make sure that this is not happening anymore. And now, as you say, there is more or less consensus on the need for more regulation. But do you think there should be a shift in the economic thinking of how economic development should take place as well? What we need in, in any case is to accompany global economic development with more global cooperation. Because we do not want uh, to come back to the highway example. We do not want to install so many signs and rules in the highways that nobody wants to drive anymore. So um, we, we need stronger global cooperation. And uh, we are living in a, in a global uh, economy. But uh, of course, our national systems still prevail when we edit laws, when we, um, when we look at, uh, at, at policies. So what we have to do is to coordinate much better on a global level. Schwab says finding a global solution to the crisis requires international networking that goes beyond purely national interests. The World Economic Forum employs a staff from 55 countries who are in constant touch with global leaders. Schwab thinks it's important that global political and business leaders work together to tackle the global challenges. Apart from the annual Davos meetings, the World Economic Forum has hosted international meetings at other venues. One of them in 2007 in the Chinese city of Dalian brought together 1,700 leaders. They discussed a wide range of issues including China's economy, global climate change and poverty. And last November, the forum hosted an economic summit in the Indian capital of New Delhi. Executives of leading Indian companies and business leaders from 35 other nations took part. The aim of these meetings is to help build global networks. Schwab says constant cross-border communication will help generate new ideas that lead to solutions to global problems. I think uh, networking is an important aspect. Uh, you invariably can't get a forum or a summit where all of the business leaders come together. I mean, you, you have been trying to create a network which is very diverse and uh, multilateral. Is that, the, is that the, um, a scheme that uh, the forum is trying to create for a new um, possible governance of international issues? As the World Economic Forum is, if I may say so, it's a connecting organization. Connecting? It's a connecting organization. Uh, say are governmental organizations or say private organizations. We need an approach where we integrate all actors because the big challenges in the world cannot be solved by governments alone or by business alone. We need to connect the key governmental and non-governmental actors. But also, uh, when you look at the problems in the world of today, they are all interconnected. You have health which is related to development, you have uh, environment which is uh, related to trade. All those issues today are interrelated, but our international system 
is based on a very departmentalized approach. So we have a World Health Organization for health issues, we have a World Trade Organization for trade issues, we have an IMF for financial issues, because uh, such a connecting organization is absolutely necessary in the 21st century. I was wondering whether you wanted to depoliticize the issues so that they can be solved um, more easily, or yes, but is that uh, what, what is necessary? Uh, when there is a crisis which which uh, affects practically all countries in the world, uh, every country wants to protect itself uh, best, and uh, even if it's at the detriment of uh, other countries. Uh, I, I think in a crisis, in a, in a negative, in a bad situation, everybody becomes more egoistic. Uh, and we have absolutely to make sure that this is not happening. The problem is, the problem is that national governments are under the pressure of the national public opinion in order to be re-elected. So the, the national uh, electorate, they want to see governments acting, doing something, and the temptation to do something which preserves national interests but is contradictory to global interests, a catalyst to stimulate long-term discussion. Mm -hmm. Because don't forget, uh, governments usually have a perspective for four years. Business leaders have a very short-term perspective. We want to, to, to integrate into the decision-making process a more long-term perspective and a more integrated perspective. Schwab says a new philosophy is needed for the post-crisis era. Last year, he wrote a piece in the U.S. magazine Foreign Affairs. He coined the phrase global corporate citizenship, urging businesses to be good members of the global community. Schwab was referring to the global space in which governments have less authority. He stressed the need for companies to play a role in tackling issues that could have a dramatic impact on our future. These include global warming, dwindling water resources, and deepening poverty. Schwab argued that the idea of global corporate citizenship could help resolve some of the problems we face. He cited the efforts of this major Swiss food company to save water resources. The company reduced water use at its plants to show that large users like themselves had a duty to manage water resources. The company also funds projects to dig wells to supply drinking water. Schwab says the important thing is that businesses work with governments and NGOs to create a system for resolving global problems. The idea of global corporate citizenship goes one step beyond the concept of corporate social responsibility. Schwab says if more companies put this idea into practice, it could generate a new model for resolving global scale challenges. You have coined the word, word uh, clo corporate global citizenship. Yeah. That is a new world that, uh, and, we, it, and, and uh, how is that different with uh, corporate social responsibility? It's a, it goes beyond. Corporate social responsibility means that you take care um, of your stakeholders, um, your 
immediate stakeholders, which means your neighbors, you take care of your employees and so on. Um, corporate um, citizenship, global citizenship means that your, your stakeholders are not only uh, so uh, who, with whom you interact in your daily life. Uh, so stakeholders are today in the global world. It's also the farmer somewhere in Africa who, um, who has problems uh, because uh, he has not enough water, he has not enough um, seeds and so on. So how to, to, to take care of those more distant uh, stakeholders. That is, let's say, the purpose of um, corporate global citizenship. Why do corporations have to be thinking about the distant global problems? Because um, if, if, let's take Africa, uh, there are two reasons. The first one is a, 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 um, a reason of social justice. We cannot have a world which is uh, divided into uh, people who suffer and nobody cares for them. And on the other hand, uh, people who live in relatively good conditions. But the other reason is if we look at uh, the economic development over the last 10 years, until we had the crisis. This development was mainly driven by the new consumers which we had in China, in India, and many other countries. So this farmer in Africa somewhere could be a consumer, if we, if we give him the opportunity to, to, to make a good living, to earn his money, um, he becomes also a consumer. So you're saying that the corporation are also a stakeholder in the sustainable development of the, of course. the globe. And uh, citizenship means that you have a license to operate globally, but you have also certain duties. A citizen all, always has rights and duties. And one of the duties is to take care of uh, certain issues where government, governments alone, um, are not uh, sufficient enough to provide solutions. Where the combination of uh, the expertise of companies and the engagement of civil society and uh, the financial means of governments provides an ideal platform to address an issue in a practical way. Do you find that this crisis is not uh, an easy um, uh, time for no, the corporations? But let's face, if we neglect the other challenges which we have, let's take climate change, uh, then we may solve the present crisis, but the next crisis uh, is just um, uh, in front of us and we stumble from one crisis to another crisis. I think uh, the, the big challenge which we have in the world is that we have to address so many challenges at the same time and all those challenges are very complex and the time which we have at our disposal is very short. And the consequences of a climate change crisis may be much more dramatic even compared to what we see uh, in the financial world today. The dream is that the world um, is really interconnected, that the world looks in a long-term way at the challenges which we have, that everybody feels the sense of uh, global responsibility. Globalization is not an ideology, it's a fact. We are interdependent. Pollution doesn't stop at the border. So my dream is that the world looks at all those issues in, in a way where we feel much more interconnected 
and where we feel really part of a global community, a global community committed to improving the state of the world. Mr. Schwab has watched the world change for nearly 40 years. He said the world has become increasingly politicized and countries tend to negotiate and seek compromise only in their own interests. He cited the need for a neutral system that acts in the global interest to resolve cross-border challenges. Mr. Schwab said such a system is not established top-down, but through bottom-up efforts in which everyone takes part. He said the Davos meeting is a place to debate how we can create such a system. That wraps up today's program. Please join us again.